Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 5th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Orlando, Florida. Attackers keep coming up with new and creative ways to download malicious files on Windows. For the longest time, attackers have, for example, used Bits Admin. Bits Admin is a tool that's typically been used to download updates for Windows, but well, it can also be used to download malicious files. And Xavier came across yet another little trick that can be used on Windows to download files, and that's CertUtil. Now, CertUtil has a number of functions that can be used to download files. And what Xavier observed was sort of a combination of uh, this feature, the ability to download file, and the ability to then decode Base64 encoded files. This way, the file being downloaded is actually Base64 encoded, and then later cert util is used again to decode it. Base64 encoding, of course, will bypass some simple signature-based malware detection mechanism as the file isn't readily recognizable as an executable. It looks like variations of this have existed for a while. There is like a blog by Kaspersky and a couple of others that describe various variants of this use of cert util. And Microsoft released a critical update for its malware protection engine. The flaw being addressed by this update would allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code using the malware protection engine. And since uh, this malware protection engine runs as local admin, the attacker would gain local admin rights. Now, yes, it's not Patch Tuesday, but Microsoft has in the past often released updates for the malware protection engine out of band. These updates are typically applied as part of the regular signature updates that should happen daily anyway. And Debian Linux had to patch a pretty interesting and kind of embarrassing security vulnerability. Turns out the simple Unix utility Beep, which essentially just uh, does a beep on the console, has a privilege escalation vulnerability. This utility runs with SUID root, so whenever you run beep, you actually execute a process using the root user. And there was apparently a timing vulnerability that allowed execution of arbitrary code. Haven't seen any details or any exploits yet, but they're probably not far out. So if you see this update come by, you probably just want to apply it. And then there's a new trick to discover if someone copy pasted text from a web application or other source. The trick here is that when creating a customized document, you embed a username or another identifier in the document as zero with characters. In Unicode, you're able to define characters that have no width. So what you do here is you insert a pattern into the text that does watermark the text and not actually alter its appearance. Now, if a user just copy paste the text, they will also paste these zero width characters. And that of course will then result in an identifier that can later be used to actually figure out who copy pasted the text. Now there are of course many similar tricks that have been used in the past, like small changes in layouts and such. But the nice thing here is that the insertion of these zero width characters can easily be automated and that they are perfectly invisible to the user. Now there is at least one Google Chrome extension that has been released so far that does alert the user about these zero width characters. In this case, it just replaces them with emojis in order to make it more obvious that there is something else hidden in the text. And then a quick announcement about our website. Now, tomorrow we will be switching TLS certificates. This wouldn't necessarily something I would specifically announce, but for many years now, we have been using Komodo certificates. And at some point we also have at HTTP public key pinning enabled on our website. Now, this key pin should have expired and we literally are waiting till the last day to actually swap the certificate to prevent any 
issues and we are going to move to let's encrypt certificates of course with let's encrypt key pinning no longer really is practical due to the rapid key rotation that let's encrypt does and also that we don't really have that control over the public key as you typically have if you are using the let's encrypt scripting system in addition we will also turn off tls 1.0 Oh, again, now in the past, this has caused issues with some older podcast lines. So if you have problems downloading the podcast, let me know. We're probably not going to turn TLS 1.0 on again. Lipsyn, who we are using for the audio files, has turned off TLS 1.0 for quite a while. So this really only should affect the RSS feed that your podcast reader does process. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.